At a count of 726 cards, the 1979 top set is one of those fun looking collections to acquire in full. Here's another group that I remember purchasing through rack packs at the local pharmacy for just a few cents each. I can still close my eyes and remember poses and images of certain players. Reggie Jackson and Mike Parrott's sunglasses, Bo Diaz crouched in a low catching stance, and the old school uniform and awesome do of Wayne Garland. The company placed a banner which holds each team name on front, reminiscent of the diagonal one from 1966. All-Stars were again designated by a separate banner on each player's base card. On the backs, the baseball game from the previous year was replaced with a quiz entitled Baseball Dates. These cards are notorious for having centering issues, thus making high-grade examples difficult to come by. In 79, most rookie cards were designated as prospects, and such players were grouped by team instead of position. All-time record holders highlighted single season and career marks in eight statistical categories. League leaders, record breakers, and team cards made their annual appearance. Ozzie Smith is the only real big name rookie in this set. Bump Wills, who played with the Rangers the season before, was rumored to be traded to the Blue Jays, and Topps took a gamble by releasing a card with his supposed new team's banner. The transaction never occurred, the card was fixed with the same photo, and this is the only variation in the entire set. I've read from multiple sources that card number 489 of Larry Cox actually shows Dave Rader, but honestly, I can't tell. Just look at Larry's 1978 card. Lots of similarities. I'm glad the decision to ID the picture didn't fall on me. I put together a set in my youth, and if memory serves correct, it was either sold or traded. Missing it like I did, the pleasant surprise and happy feelings returned when a new batch showed up with my 1970s lot from earlier mentions. While cobbling three sets at the same time, a fresh Aussie rookie was pulled from a random group of rack packs. It was the last major card that was needed to finish one of the sets. Good news in the completing master sets front. This one is done. I've had it for such a long time and probably did replace a few along the way. Examining them closer, I'm really happy with the way they look. Here's where I stand with all my sets from the 1970s. Only one is completely finished, but just a few dozen more cards will tidy up all the rest. Thanks for watching, and check out future videos which will follow and update my progress in finishing all the other vintage sets. In the next video, we set our sights towards a new generation of rookies and stars. Get ready for the 1980s.